Hello, this is Mike Brown, and today is March 4th, 2021, and this month for the Notary Association Review, we have a Notary Public story. We have a Notary Public who's been arrested in March, on March 3rd, uh, for a voter fraud with a notary stamp, and it was in Alabama. Let's take a look at uh, what happened here. So the judge ordered yesterday an election do-over after they found 78% of the mail-in ballots were proven to be fraudulent, and the notary notarized them all um, like an assembly plant. Um, she did hundreds and hundreds of them and admitted it when they arrested her. So her name is Dallas Jones, and Judge uh, Wheel offered a new runoff election in Aberdeen, Mississippi as we found out that 78% of the mail-in ballots were proven to be fraudulent, and this lady notarized them. I feel bad for her. Okay, so this is the facts. The notary public, Dallas Jones, was illegally notarizing fake absentee voter ballots as follows. Nobody appeared before her. Um, somebody made the fake signatures. That's not clear who did that. The signatures she notarized were fake. She admitted it. She knowingly notarized fake signatures. She admitted it. And um, they were fake voter absentee voter oaths or jurats. So she was doing affidavits on absentee voter ballots, which were official government documents. That makes it even worse. So I went over to the state of Mississippi database and Lo and behold, they have a notary search where you can look up all the notary public licenses, just like we can in New York. And uh, I put in Dallas Jones, and luckily there was only one Dallas Jones licensed in Monroe County in the wonderful state of Mississippi, where she is employed by Colbell Banker, which is a Fortune 50 corporation, a really awesome place to work with full benefits. Will she lose that? I redacted her telephone number because um, I don't want anybody, um, you know, calling her or doxing her. Okay? So this is just information from the public database and uh, the news article. So, uh, as I mentioned, she has an awesome job at Coldwell Banker Southern Real Estate and a job anybody would want, job security, great retirement, full benefits, something a lot of us don't have. Um, now the question is, will she go to jail and lose her great job with Coldwell Banker? Can I be honest? These days, it seems your political affiliation is sometimes above the law, ain't it the truth? In any case, let's look at the laws of New York regarding criminal penalties for voter fraud. So, uh, in the voter fraud article here, I got from a, an attorney's website who uh, this particular attorney likes to defend people who did this. So, uh, fraudulent voter registrations is one of the things. Maybe uh, this lady could uh, go to this lawyer. Uh, maybe they're licensed in that state too. Um, so, she did fraudulent, fraudulent voter registrations and turned them in. She was offering a false instrument, a legal instrument, for filing with a government agency. That's a class E felony in New York, which E felonies are uh, mandatory three to four years in prison if convicted, and she did hundreds of them. So hundreds of class E felonies on top of each other. Uh, she did uh, falsified business records in New York, and that's a class A misdemeanor in New York, punishable by up to one year in jail. And, uh, so that's bad enough, right? Now, these New York laws did not cover the Republic law because these are just the voter fraud laws of New York, which this lady is guilty of in another state. And we wouldn't want to do this in New York. So after all those voter fraud criminal penalties, we have the notary public statutes. And for one thing, failing to perform a duty imposed by statutes are a criminal charge of professional misconduct, which are class A misdemeanors, which you all know are one year maximum in jail. And so she did these uh, Class A misdemeanors. The person must appear in front of the notary on the day specified. There was no person. The notary must get satisfactory evidence of the person's ID. There was none. And the notary shall include the venue where the person appeared. In our case, that's with the words state of New York, county of, where the person appeared. If you're saying they appeared and they didn't appear, 
Uh, those are all misdemeanors under the professional misconduct criminal charge. Now, the felonies in, in New York Notary Public License Law are under the penal laws and are as follows that are pertinent. Uh, Section 145.0 in the penal law, issuing a false certificate. That's when a person is guilty of issuing a false certificate. That means notarizing. When being a public servant authorized by law to make or issue official certificates, that's a notary public. And with intent to defraud, deceive, or injure another person, he or she issues such an instrument, in this case a voter uh, absentee ballot, or makes the same with intent to be issued, knowing that it contains a false statement or false information. And that is a Class E felony. And she has, for that, three to four years in prison times hundreds of times that she did it. Next, it gets really better, forgery in the second degree. A person is guilty of forgery in the second degree when, with intent to fraud, see or injure another, he or she falsely makes, completes, or alters a, uh, uh, an instrument to become uh, a deed, will, contract, anything, or it says any other legal instrument, any other legal instrument. Uh, and if it's required to be filed with a public office and an official instrument officially issued or created by a public office, which she is, a public servant, a notary public is an officer of the state of New York, that's forgery in the second degree, it's a class D felony, that's three to seven years, seven years max, in, in this case, hundreds of times. Okay, now, it even gets better, so now you lost your wonderful job, you're in prison for I don't know how long. And then when you get out, what's waiting for you? Officers guilty of malfeasance are liable for damages. That's when you defraud somebody. An officer authorized to take the acknowledgement or proof of a conveyance or other instrument, any other instrument, or to certify such proof or acknowledgement or to record the same, was guilty of malfeasance or fraudulent practice in the execution of any duty prescribed by law in relation thereto is liable to money damages to the person injured. So who, who could sue her in this case? Um, the people that voted for the other party. She damaged them. The other party that she defrauded that was voting, that, that was running against whoever she was cheating for. And she defrauded the state of damages because it costs money for all this. So now she could be broke and unemployed and out of jail on parole and then they take any other money of hers they can find. All not good. So we won't be doing this. Now, I'm not a fan of the defund the police. Um, so however you feel about that, that's fine. But ask yourself this question. If civil society has nobody who protects the law, then what kind of society is that? I'm for reform the police. The police have a bad apple, just like every other section of society. And uh, there's a lot of corruption now, and there's a lot of good police. But if we don't have the laws and the people to enforce it, what kind of society do we have? Okay, so that's it for this month's interesting uh, notary refresher training. So uh, for people that are watching this video on social media, and you want to know more about becoming a notary or your notary, and you want to subscribe to this uh, refresher training for free, just go on over to www.notaryeverything.com and see the main website where you can subscribe to the Notary Association newsletter for free. There's notary supplies at a really good rate. And refresher training like this ongoing when you subscribe to the newsletter. And um, for those of you that are not licensed, you can look at the online notary exam prep classes to become licensed where we have all the current exam situation under the emergency. Exams are now all open everywhere. For example, in Manhattan, they have five of them every month now published. You do have to email the state for selective seating because of uh, social distancing. But there's new ex exams opened up all over the state right now in March 2021. And you can always uh, subscribe and get our phone number on this website. For hotline answer, uh, we answer procedure questions for notary licensing law, which we've been teaching for over 19 years. We're in the 20th year, over 30,000 students. So we can answer your questions because the state doesn't answer their phone anymore. As of the second week in February, when you call up there and you select Notary Public in their menu on the phone, um, they took Notary Public off the menu, and then they had a callback 
feature to get a call back when they don't answer the phone, and they took that off there too as the middle of February. So if you want somebody to answer the questions, we'll tell you what the law says because the state won't answer their phone. Uh, we will never uh, give legal advice. We will just tell you what it says, and uh, that's what we're doing here, training people with the statutes, not giving legal advice. All right, so that's it. We'll see you on the other.